Good morning, everyone. It's a very romantic, cold <laughs> weather. Uh, so today, Dr. Milan will talk to us about a very, like, interesting topic, which is uh, the illusions and the things that you think you are seeing on an X-ray or a CT or an MRI or whatever, uh, but it's not real. So it's called now you see it, now you don't. Okay. Uh, I think it will be very interesting. He's done a very good job. Good morning, everyone. So I am Dr. Miran. I will present the seminar and the supervision of Dr. Ahmed about the optical illusions. Uh, these are about the contents. We'll go through it uh, rapidly. Okay, first we'll talk about the definition of visual illusions. Uh, they are distortions, alteration, or alternative in the appearance of reality that result primarily from sensory and perceptual processing mechanism of the human visual system. So they are distortion, alternative, or alterations of the reality. So you see things that are not real, like these circles are moving, but yes, they are not. not moving. Your brain is playing tricks on you. Yes. Okay. So we have a very old example like this lady. Is it a young or old lady? Is it the mother or the wife? If you see it from one side, like a young lady on the other side, like the old one. Uh, also, we have these examples like in the ultrasound, the first uh, ultrasound image, you don't know what is it. But after uh, with additional context, you see that this is the uh, head of the fetus. It's like ambiguous features. This is it like this woman in the uh, mirror, or is it a skull? It's, it could be both of them. Uh, and the visual illusions will be categorized according to the points they will emerge into three categories: illusion of sensation, perception, or image formation. So this is the uh, classification of it could be in the image formation, like we have modality specific artifacts, parallax, or next, uh, when the stimuli will come to the eye and it will be converted into neural uh, activities, it's sensation, like Mach band's background effect. Then in higher order neurons, we have perception. From perception, we have ambiguous figures, fictional illusion, and other perceptual illusions. So we'll go. we will go through it step by step. We have illusions of sensation. Uh, as we say, when the light will stimulate the photoreceptors in the retina, it will be converted into neural activity. Then via the optic nerve will uh, will be transmitted. Then via the optic chasm will go to the contractor side of the brain. Here they will stimulate the lateral geniculate nucleus, and from there it will go to the uh, visual cortex in the occipital lobe. And from the visual cortex, if you see this. Uh, number six, it will go either into the inferior temporal or into the uh, dorsal parietal area. Each one has its specific functions, like the number five, it will give you information about where and how pathway, where is the subject, its location. The number six will give you information about what is it, its shape, its color, it's like these things. So the illusion of sensation is from this pathway. We have examples like mag bands. Mag bands occur, they, they are apparent bright and dark lines, occur at the border between objects with different optical density, contrast level, or luminescence. They apparently, they appear as bright or dark lines. It occurs at the boundaries. And uh, we have positive or negative mag band. Uh, this process will be formed by the lateral inhibition, like one of the cells when it will be stimulated, by horizontally, it will inhibit nearby cells. Uh, again, at the boundaries, it's either will be positive or negative. The lines will appear accordingly. So really, there are no lines. Yes. But when this is too dark and this is too bright, and there's a transition between them, yeah. our brain tells us that there is a band, a band somewhere here. Yes, yes. We have some examples, uh, like in A, uh, at the base of the dance, there's a dark line. Uh, maybe you interpret it as fracture, but actually there's not a fracture. 
uh, another example like uh, the left cardiac border you frequently see a uh, dark line you may see this new one with the stylum but actually this is a negative mag band uh, another example like here in the x-ray of the new joint there's a line you may interpret it as fracture but when you go to the lateral view and you see there's no other signs of fracture you know it's an illusion and a frequent uh, on the chest x-ray this yeah, is formed by skin fault yeah. when you, the other one e again is x-ray it shows that there is nothing there's nothing yes there's a dark yes other examples like from this uh, this is actually a horse bone horse yeah <laughs> showing this is a uh, dark if I, if I brought you this in the exam <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Again, okay. this is about the lines, the dark line and the white line, negative on positive mag bands. And on the chest X-ray, lateral chest X-ray, we have this nodule. Uh, there is actual this dark line, founding the boundaries of it. Sometimes useful the mag bands. We have another thing. It's called the background effect. What's the background effect? We see it on X-ray or CT MRI. It's modulation of eyes and objects optical density or gray level uh, with differences in attenuation or signal intensity represented by different shades of gray. So, example, we have these two large squares composed of many small squares. Because of the difference in attenuation of the gray level of the background, they, in the first image A, they seem to be different. But when we eliminate the background in the B, we see that they have the same gray level there's no difference between them uh -huh. so this is this is the same density as this one yes but the background the is background has that's yeah. why we see like different density yes example for example uh, we have CT scan of abdomen a there is a lesion which is iso to the kidney it's not so obvious uh, in the b when you give contrast and uh, the background when changes the cyst will appear in the lesion. Uh, so this is the background effect? Yes, background effect. Again, CT scan of the brain. Uh, in the A, it's not so obvious. There's a little subarachnoid hemorrhage. Not so obvious. But in the B, when you make the background more darker, it will appear more. So why this yeah, circle? circle? Yeah, the circle is there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, really. This is the subarachnoid hemorrhage. It's not quite obvious. Yeah. Change the background and it's very prominent. Yeah. Actually, we have the background uh, window width and this. Window width will, and yeah, we okay. will change it, right? Uh, next step, we have illusion of perception. There's two mechanisms: bottom up and the top down processing. Uh, I'll not go through detail. Like it's your brain trying to finish. Uh, to draw the linkages on the lines and the B, how to complete uh, the words when they are incomplete. This is experience is so important the inter interpretation of the X-rays. Familiarity with multiple examples of same disease creates a more extensive database of geons, thereby increasing the chance of a match with a novel image and making accurate perception more likely. In fact, this may be the most important yeah. word in the. Yeah. In the science the experience, the ex experience yeah. it's, you cannot buy experience. You can buy a nice machine, you can buy good contrast medium, a very nice printer, you can buy everything, but you cannot buy experience. Yes. And together, bottom up and top down processing generate a hypothesis about the image that's matched to a past experience, resulting in the perception. So, again, experience is very important so that what you see will be matched to your experience and the image you perceive this image like that we have illusions of perception many types like ambiguous figures ambiguous again it leads to multiple perceptual interpretations uh, each of which may be correct for example this image if we see the white area as the background the foreground you will see two faces if we see the two faces as the foreground, the background you'll see there's a vase. Yeah. Glass or a vase or yes, something. yes. 
uh, example we have this CT scan in first uh, a the ultrasound shows there is uh, a mass like lesion you don't know is it true mass or it is some sort of variant when you do the CT scan you see this uh, hypertrophied column of Burton it's not a true mass it's ambiguous again this image uh, showing there is a hypotenuating hypodense area in the center of the abdomen if we regard this at the background you may see this is mesentery and fat but if you go is it a foreground you see this uh, pancreas diffuse infiltrated by the fat mm -hmm. but just that this is the, of the pancreas yes with massive fat infiltration yes but here we can consider it just mesentery fat. Just mesentery fat, yes. Yeah. Uh, another example, this chest x-ray. If we <coughs> uh, regard the scapula uh, as the foreground and the ribs as background, you see there is a uh, lucency. So you may see this athletic lesion in the scapula. But if we regard the ribs as the foreground, the scapula as background, you know this is the lung tissue in your lungs. Just overlapping. Yes. Another type of illusion, fictional illusion, refer to apparent presence of an object uh, on an image, well, actually no uh, image, no object actually present. We have two types, subjective contour and questionable lesions. Subjective contour leads to like false geometric shapes by extending lines with boundaries of the, in the mind's eyes. They will you know, make uh, an image by extension of the lines on boundaries. Yeah, you see things that are not there. Yeah. And it's in your uh, mind by the extension of the lines. For example, this canista triangle, you have three uh, black triangles with a piece removed. It will give you an illusion of a white triangle. But when we remove one of them, the triangle will disappear. Mm -hmm. So this is going to look here, you see a, a white triangle. triangle. Yes. But here, there's the, the triangle will disappear. And this discontinuity may be due to a difference in color or luminescence, which helps demarcate figure on the ground. Example, in the first one, uh, this x-ray showed there's a lytic area. No. Yeah, when you do in the B MRI, showing there's nothing. So this is an illusion formed by the bowel dust. And D, there's, uh, it appears like a pseudo subluxation, but actually there is no subluxation. And sometimes C, there is, you see it, you may miss it, but actually there's a bucket, uh, buccal fracture in the distal radius. And the problem is in our mind because we want to see all these irregular lines as straight line. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we will be mistaken by it. Questionable lesions, another type. Uh, they suggest real disease but actually not present. Mostly they will lead to false positive finding. Another example, when in the proximal humerus there is a lytic lesion uh, later when they did the CTMRI, there is nothing. It's commonly mistaken. Or B, when you see there is, uh, this appears like a uh, basilar artery, like there's an aneurysm, but when they repeat it, there is nothing. It's formed by the motion artifact. Another type, we have paradoxic illusions. Mostly this is related to the technique. Like this one, you see the one of the vertebrae that's elongated and cut it. It will make it like a bizarre shape. And this is uh, due to a non-parallel orientation of the axial skeleton relative to the scanning plane. So it's related to the technique. The patient has a scoliosis, I think. Yeah, a little but scoliosis. Yeah. scoliosis. Yes. So part of vertebra appears on one image while the rest of the vertebraceous other parts. Yes. Confused, what's going on here? Yes. Another type we have distortions. Distortions are uh, exaggerations in the scale or dimension of one object created by surrounding object in specific contexts. Like this one, fictional circle illusion. We have in the center these two uh, squares, circles. They are the same size, but when they are uh, surrounded by these multiple small squares, it appears to be larger in size than. Uh, when it's surrounded by these large squares. And this is when we see confluent lymphadenopathy around the blood vessel. Uh, the blood vessel looks smaller. You may see there is compression, but actually there is no compression. It's an illusion. We 
have illusions of image formation, it's mostly technical. Uh, example, like the parallax. Parallax is an apparent exaggeration of the relative position of two objects with viewed along two different lines of sight. Example, we have this uh, lateral number spine x-ray. We see this uh, T11, 12, T12, L1. Apparently, it appears because to be like... Two lines. Yeah. They are just because they are viewed from two, two different, different views. Yes. Views. Yes. Another example, like in this AP on lateral skull X-ray, there is you see the the bullet inside the skull, but when you see there is no any associated fracture anything. Uh, so when you you do see scan, you see it it's in the skull. And this is the bullet. Yeah. If you see the X-ray, you will see it in inside intracranial. Yeah. Yes. But when you do a CT, you it's see in the skull, nothing intracranial. Yes, it's uh, outside. Uh, another example below again the bullet in the PA on lateral chest x ray you see it's inside, but when you do see it scan again the soft tissue, it's not inside. And this is a big problem. We are talking about medical legal issues here. Bullets and yes, you know. Yeah, yes. We have uh, some other examples of the artifacts like we see it frequent in ultrasound, these uh, uh, dense white lines, it's formed by the gas. It's called ring down artifact. We have another example like the chemical shift artifact due to misregistration of the fat in water. You see it on one line, dark on a dense line, white line. Uh, like zipper artifact. It will make for me like uh, this noisy, yeah, the noisy lines. What's its relation to? Do you know? And why do these artifacts happen, the zipper artifact? Outside signals. It's either linked to hardware or software problems, mm -hmm. or the scanner itself, or the shielding. Mm -hmm. So signal is getting so from outside, outside into the scanner. Yes. Last thing, we have something called pyridolia. It's the illusion of significance in meaningless sensory input. Pyridolia it will like make you a sign. So sometimes uh, we have some few examples like the uh, patient comes with acute scrotal. Let's go back a little bit. It's a specific condition, useful diagnosis. Why? Because the radiologists have described hundreds of such diagnostic signs. Yani, the signs that we have, for example, I don't know what sign, card box sign, uh, this sign. These are the pari. And you take something radiological and you make it similar to something else, like hummingbird sign. Yes. There's no hummingbird in the brain, but it looks like hummingbird. Humming bird, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it help you in yeah. the diagnosis. For example, this is a patient with uh, scrotal pain, and when you do ultrasound the scrotum, you see like a man in the pain. It looks like face of a man in pain, but actually there's no such thing. Man in pain. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, someone's <laughs> screaming. Yeah. He's yeah. screaming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, beside there's also this patient with the glioblastoma, you see like a rabbit, but actually it's not a rabbit. Yes, I rabbit, I It's a beautiful rabbit. Yeah. And as an example, uh, okay, so in Jupiter yeah. syndrome, like the molar tooth sign, yeah. the midbrain is like the molar tooth. And this is because of the uh, absence of the crossing fibers with it's deeper interpendicular fossa. Ah. Okay, and the, yeah, hummingbird sign. <laughs> Which is a uh, part of what syndrome, do you know? It's, uh, yeah, it's progressive supranuclear palsy. palsy. Yeah, the, yes, the midbrain atrophy was the palm same size. Uh, another example yeah. like the double panda sign, you have the, a big pang panda, then a small yeah, panda, panda occurs like uh, in situations like Wilson disease and others. We have the <coughs> Scotty dog, we know, articular yeah. fracture. Yeah. yeah, and there's a w winking owl sign when one of the pedicles disappear, fractured. It means metastasis mostly. Like an owl winks yeah. out a wink, a dog oh, like Yeah. Winking yeah. owl, you call Winking it? owl sign. Yeah. Thanks. So at the end, 
what I mean is everything in the illusions, it's all in when you see the uh, any image, it will come to your mind many different things, maybe real or not. What's important, the previous experience, how much images you saw, it will uh, come back to your mind, it will be matched with the previous experience and will lead to uh, yeah, diagnosis mostly. The First of all, thank you very much. It's uh, nicely put. It's yeah. uh, concise, focused, and it has a great. Uh, if you focus on it, it has a great clinical significance. Yes. So I think the message from that is experience, experience, experience. You need to see more and more and more and more. But not only you, everyone in radiology from the most famous professor in the history of radiology till the one who's just starting. The more you see, the more you know that this is an illusion, this is an artifact, this is uh, your brain telling you this, this is... So that's why sometimes when you're sitting reporting and you see nothing and someone more experienced than you comes and says, oh, this is a baby tumor, and you have completely missed it. The only difference is that he's seen more cases than you. Yes. And by the way, experience does not mean uh, uh, experienced people are just people who have made more mistakes than you. They know not to make the same mistake again. Okay? So that's why uh, we are always encouraging to try to make use of the more experienced, like your supervisor, your senior, your professor, because he made mistakes, he learned from it, you might learn from his mistakes, and then you do your own mistake, which will be less uh, in number and less significant, because the big mistakes, you have already learned from his experience. كبيرة لأنه الاكسبيرينس بيرسون قال لك انه اذا تسوي هاي الشغله هاي النتيجه راح تكون يو كان ريد اوف ذيس سو اني كويستشن اني كومنت اني سو ذير واز اولسو سمثينغ ريتن ذات وين يو سي ذا ايمج انتربريتيد هاو ماتش يور اتنشن هاو ماتش يور مود يو ار ساد اور هابي ويل انترفير ويز يور ايمج والله يور مود افكتس اند سمثينغ اف يو نوتيس إذا أنت قاري شيء البارحة اليوم تشوفه كل شيء وارد. يعني if yesterday you are reading مثلا pulmonary fibrosis. All chest x-rays you'll see there will be fibrosis. That's just your brain playing tricks on you. البارحة قاري مثلا bucket handle tear بلا مراية. كل ما تشوفها مراية راح تجيب bucket handle bucket. It's not real. This is your brain focus on what you read. And that's why you need to uh, once I was working in a clinic, and there was in the next next door uh, uh, more experienced radiologist working in another clinic, and people come. I was just junior resident. The people come to me. I got a pattern, pulmonary fibrosis. All chest X-rays are fibrosis, fibrosis. <laughs> and the guy next door calls me. You bar hashin the tukra pulmonary fibrosis. And then he, then go and have some very time with the guy. But anyway, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.